What's up everybody, Jack here. I think this is going to be my first ever informative video, so without further ado, this is The Art of Platform Coaching. So just a bit of background, uh, I've just come back from NZPF Nationals, which happened two weeks ago, and I coached a few lifters there. I'm also currently watching the IPF Equipped Junior Worlds, which is taking place right now in Poland. I've been observing a few of the coaches there, some of the calls that have been made, and so I'm going to give my two cents on what it takes to be a good platform coach. Step one is know your lifter. This is pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going to assume since you're going to be platform coaching someone, you have some sort of relationship with this person. This might not be the case if you are the head coach of, let's say, a big team and your lifters are from across the different regions or across the country, but I'm going to assume if you are in that position, you already know what you are doing. So the importance of knowing your lifter is pretty straightforward. You need to know what their technique is like, what their style of lifting is like, let's say whether they're a grinder or an explosive lifter. This will help you make more informed decisions on the day on what you're going to make for their attempt selection as well as the type of cues you're going to be using because different cues work for different people and some people might not even like using cues at all they might prefer to have it running through their head and not be distracted so step one is to know your lifter step two know your opponents knowledge is power so do your homework this could be as simple as going through past competitions and seeing what kind of numbers they hit, as well as going through social media platforms and analyzing training footage and meet videos to get a better understanding at what your opponents are capable of. So take this data and take it into consideration when you are making your plan, but on the other hand, don't be completely reliant on it. For example, when going through old meet results, you wouldn't be able to tell if someone was injured at first glance if you just looked at the meet numbers as well as with training footage. You know, people might not always post their best sets, so it may not be a fair representation of what they're actually capable of. Step three, make a plan. A combination of steps one and two, after you know your lifter and what they're capable of, as well as your opponent and having a rough idea of what they're capable of, you should now be able to plan all your attempts as well as all your warm-ups. This is important as it reduces the amount of time you spend on meet day crunching numbers. Step 4, know your moves. Read the rule book, understand what you can and can't do, and use this to gain an advantage over your competitors. Contrary to popular belief, you don't just write an attempt on a attempt card, hand it in, and go out and lift the weights. JP Couchy describes powerlifting as chess for meatheads. And he's right, because there are a whole bunch of moves that you can make that eventually all contribute to helping you get to the best position you can be in the end. This includes uh, passing attempts to save energy, changing your openers based on lot numbers to stay ahead of your opponent, picking record attempts, as well as with deadlifting, there's a whole bunch of moves that can arise because of the changes you're allowed. So I'm not going to go through every single one of those because you could probably write a, an entire book on that. So I'll save that for later. But I will we'll go through two examples with you. The first one is an example of when a coach doesn't know their moves. And second is one where they do. So for the first one, IPF Junior Worlds, Junior Equipped Worlds this year. It was a country called Oman. I think they're new because I've never seen them before. Uh, they were in a gold medal position. So they had 265 put down and they needed this to win. Well, actually they didn't need this to win. They only needed a 257.5 to win. So they could have dropped it seven and a half kilos in order to win, but they kept it at 265 and lo and behold, didn't leave the ground. You can even hear Great Britain in the background laughing their asses off because they had just won from a poor coaching decision. 5.7.5 But can he, maybe he just knows he can do this. This is for the world title. No, it is too heavy. What were the coaches doing? And the world title goes to Daniel Sherman from Great... 
So that's an example of when a coach did not know his moves. Second example, Team USA, Raw Worlds this year. John Hack went for a 298 squat for a world record. So why did he pick 298 specifically? Uh, he was a heavier lifter than Brett, which meant that from going from 297 to 298 is an effect of 2.5 kilo jumps. It pretty much is a 300 kilo jump for him without actually having to do I said 300 kilo jump, 300 kilo squat. It was a pretty much a 300 kilo squat for him without him having to attempt 300 kilos. So that's an example of good coaching, good coaching decisions because you know uh, the moves in your hand. Know the rule book, know your moves, gain an advantage over your opponent. Step five, be flexible. So adapt to the environment, whether this is the referee, uh, the gear that's available, uh, as well as the warm ups. If see the referee's making harsh depth calls, drop your numbers, tell your lifter to go deeper. If you see them making long press calls, drop your numbers, tell your lifter to expect longer press calls. If you see the warm-ups aren't going great, drop your opener. You've made a plan, but don't get attached to the figures. Use it as a guideline and make changes when required. If you don't originally hit a goal that you planned, take a step back, drop it down a goal, whether that's uh, podium finish, individual medals, records, total PR, individual lift PR. Be flexible. Step six, stay calm and positive. As a platform coach, you are the captain. So your state is projected onto your lifter. If you become stressed, your lifter will also become stressed. Language when communicating is also very important. You can say the exact same thing, in two different ways and it will be perceived completely different. For example, if your lifter's second attempt was kind of rough, kind of grindy, you could be like, hey man, it's not like there's much more in you, we'll go 2.5 on your third. Or you could say, hey man, that was a good lift, we'll go up conservative on your third just to lock it in. Notice how eventually the same action is taken in both situations but the, com the lifter will perceive it in two completely different ways. So if your lifter senses any kind of doubt from you, it's going to subconsciously negatively affect their thoughts. And the opposite is true as well. So believe in your lifter even when they don't believe in themselves. Stay calm and positive. Step 7. When in doubt, go conservative. Now notice I didn't say always go conservative. If there's a high stake to your competition or your goal, then do the minimum it takes to win and achieve your goal. In terms of attempt selection, this means it's always better to build a total and save kilograms in a tank rather than to miss attempts. This is why people always talk about going 9 for 9. It's not the fact that you went 9 for 9 and hit all your attempts. Like, you can go 50% on your third attempt and go 9 for 9. But that's not 9 for 9. 9 for 9 also isn't going for PRs on your third attempts and hitting them all. That's also not 9 for 9. Well it is, but it's not. Going 9 for 9 is a concept where every single lift that you made contributed to your total in the end. That's 9 for 9. And you have a much better opportunity at doing that with a conservative approach rather than taking the risky attempt. So when in doubt, go conservative. So to recap, know your lifter, know your opponents, make a plan, know your moves, be flexible, stay calm and positive, when in doubt, go conservative. Those are the key aspects that, in my opinion, I believe makes a good platform coach. If you agree or disagree, let me know in the comment section down below, I'd love to hear from you all. And I think that is all for today, thank you all for watching, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. Maybe I'll make some more informative content in the future. Maybe once I get some more brain cells. I don't know, man. <laughs> Fuck it, no shit. It's on. I won, I don't care. <laughs>